Welcome to the second part of our Dignity in Practice Learning event series, Dignity and Choice in a Good Foundation. Um, just, just to start, um, please make sure that you feel really comfortable uh, today. Grab a cup of tea or coffee, maybe a notebook if you think that would be helpful. And if possible, switch your, your phones off just so you can be present in the next uh, couple of hours. It would be great if you can um, keep yourselves on mute uh, and use the chat if you want to ask any questions or make a comment. Can you hear me okay? Brilliant. And also, yes, can I please ask you that if you, if you can change your name your Zoom name with your name and the name of your organization so people know where you're coming from and what organization you are, you're representing today. That'd be great. And just for the people that are, are still coming in and everybody, just to say thank you so much for filling our event bright form. Um, we really appreciate the time that you take on that because uh, this, inform this information um, that you provide help us to understand your interest in the topic, where you're coming from and why you are here today um, with us. So thank you very much for that. Right, do, do you think we're kind of like most, most people are here? I think still some coming in. So apologies everyone, we're, we're running a little bit late, but welcome for those that I, can, I cannot see you all. I can just see my PowerPoint presentation, but welcome to everyone that is just arriving. Right, let's start. <laughs> so we want to start today with a, with a reminder that having to worry about whether you can afford the food you and your family needs to be healthy and well is inherently in opposition to the principles of dignity and human rights. It is the government's responsibility to realize the right to food and everyone has a role to play in helping people to access the financial support that is available. No part of the system will be able to end the need for charitable food aid on its own but it is clear that people across Scotland are committed to doing everything possible to move towards a future where everyone can afford the food that keeps them healthy and well. So the series of these events is part of the Dignity in Practice project and, is, and it has been developed in partnership with the Poverty Tooth Communities and a Dignity Advisory Team who represent the experiences of people facing food insecurity and community organizations working to respond to these challenges. You are going to be meeting some of um, the members in, in the breakout rooms throughout the next couple of um, hours. So the purpose of these learning events is to explore how people in Scotland are using dignity and human rights in their work to prevent and respond to food insecurity. Also, we want to bring together people from across Scotland who are involved at community, local authority and national levels to learn from good practices, examples and to learn from, um, from each other. So the first part of the learning event series last year was about promoting dignity and choice through financial uh, support, because we know that people are facing food insecurity, not because of lack of food in Scotland, but because of lack of money to afford the food they need. Last year's event was about reorienting the focus of the, of the work we are doing to support people who are facing food insecurity towards the financial grants and entitlements that exist currently for people at local authority and national level. 
Um, we brought together examples from across Scotland where people are working together to make it easier to access existing support. Um, um, and we looked here at, at you know, the strategies like the worrying about money leaflet, training for frontline staff and volunteers, and the no wrong door approach to improve um, coordination and support when someone is facing financial crisis. We also looked at how organizations are working creatively at a local level to establish, expand, or enhance the kind of support on offer to people. So we looked at examples from Moray and Argyle and Butte, where local authorities have developed flexible food funds to proactively support families before a financial crisis. So this is, um, um, we are now at the, uh, uh, just, you know, starting the, the next two events of the series, which is about dignity and choice in a, in a good foundation. So food is critical to each and every one of us, both as individuals and as a society. It is an essential component of the human rights to an adequate standard of living which allows each of us to live a life of dignity. Therefore, we're going to start um, the events with uh, Chelsea, who's going to be sharing the work of our Right to Food project, which, help us, which will help us understand what the right to food looks like for families living in Scotland. And then it will really um, um, complement the um, next week's event, where we will be looking at the current commitments from the Scottish government, like ending the need for food banks, the Good Food Nation Bill, incorporating the right to food in Scots law. But at the same time, um, being aware of the challenges we are all facing uh, at the moment, like the rising cost of living, increased pressure on people to afford the food they need with dignity um, and choice, and the measures that can help to manage the, this cost of living. We will particularly uh, focus on universal preschool meals and, and transport. So the events really we hope to, to explore what is needed and what our local and national governments are already doing to try to promote the right to food in, in, in Scotland. So it's going to be really interesting two couple of um, events and we really also look forward to, to your own contributions and your own comments because you are part of, of, of this process. And now I'm going to pass it to um, Maria. I'm just trying to get the mentee ready. Great, thanks Serena. So before we're hearing um, a project overview about the Arctic to Food Project, um, it'll be great to just have a sense of who's in the room today and what the diversity of expertise is um, that we have. So I'm gonna put a link to Mentimeter in the chat. <clears throat> so you can go to Mentimeter and type in the code that I'll just paste here. And it'll be great to hear what sector people are joining from um, today. And then Arena's um, sharing the screen, so we should be able to see those responses as they come in. And if you can't use Mentimeter, feel free to put it in the chat. Yep, thanks so much, Carolyn, yeah, definitely. That's great. We've got a few coming in now. Um, NHS, um, local authority, voluntary sector, community sector, some of the chat as well. Voluntary sector. Somebody from Food Bank, community center. Give it a few more seconds for the others to come through. Youth worker. It's brilliant to see all these different areas that are all key players in, in responding to food insecurity in Scotland. I 
think Karina's switching on to um, a second question, um, which is uh, which local authority um, are you joining us from today? Glasgow, Fife, Edinburgh, Dundee, North Ayrshire, West Lothian, Perth and Kinross. Um, Dundee in the chat. Um, Tayside. It's brilliant to see such a range of different places. East Rome for sure. I'm usually in Edinburgh, but I'm in England today, so I won't answer that. <laughs> That's great. We have 29 responses now, but it's just brilliant to have such a range of um, experience and expertise in the room, both in terms of what sector we're working in and, and where people are based across the country. Um, I'll pass back to you, Irina, now, if you want to. Thank you. It feels like we got the whole Scotland here today. It's great. Okay. Um, so now I, I just I just would like you to, um, before we start the session, to take a moment to think uh, what gives you joy when you have food? What is it that you enjoy? So I just have a, a really simple question for you to answer again in, in, in Mentimeter. What does it mean to take pride and pleasure in our food? What does that mean to you? Because food is just not about just fuel and nutrients that keep us alive. Food is much more than that. Food is about culture, it's about community, it's about uh, the connections we build with our friends, with our families, with our neighbors. Um, it's, it's a celebration of life and it's very personal. It can mean different things to different people. So we're really interested to, if you can share that experience. So I will invite you to, to share as many words as you like or phrases or ideas um, about the, uh, about the question that um, I, I'm just going to share my menti again, so it passes, so you can. So, yes, what does it mean to take pride and pleasure in our food? What is it that you enjoy? Comfort sharing meals with friends, looking after my body, sharing with family and friends, being able to support local businesses, connection, trying new ingredients in different countries, making a meal that my kids find tasty, trying new things, family, socializing, tasting, enjoyment, community, connection, family, health, and pleasure. Test breaking bread together, connection, experiencing. It's about caring, nurturing, freedom, and gratitude to have access to enough food. It's a time to rest. We have self-care in the chat. Thank you, Glory. So food, it just means so many things for us and so many experiences that we should all, and it would be nice to keep that uh, in mind throughout the last, uh, the next couple of hours. And um, thank you so much for sharing because this can be quite, quite uh, personal to all of us. And I'm sorry, there's just so many people uh, replying that I can't read all of them. But here, just the last few is memories. And I will um, identify with that as well, myself. So I'll, I'll pass that now to, to Chelsea, who will take us to the next 